Today, we are going to look at a surprising math puzzle. What you see on the screen now is a cryptogram, a math puzzle where each alphabet represents a different number. As an example, if we designate E to be 1, then no other alphabet on the cryptogram can be 1. The puzzle itself is surprising since the alphabet reads 3 plus 3 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 equals 11, which we all know is true numerically. But here for the cryptogram, the word 3 actually stands for a 5-digit number coded in the alphabet's E-H-R-E-E. -E. Our task here is to figure out what each alphabet represents. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, if you look at the puzzle, it is reasonable to guess that E represents 1, since it is the digit which stands for the carryover of the 10,000th digit to the 100,000th digit. Now, of course E could have represented 2 if there were a carryover of 2 from a 10,000th digit. Let's use a technique called the greedy method to prove that E could not be 2. What we do here is we try to maximize each of the numbers which add up to the 6th digit number coded by 11 and see that even with the maximum sum, it is impossible to obtain a 6th digit number which starts with a 2. To maximize the sum, we start from maximizing the digits on the leftmost column and let t be 9. After that, we have a couple of h on the thousandth digit column, which we designate as 8 in order to maximize the sum. Continuing further to the hundredth column, r should be designated as 7, while o designated as 6, since there are two copies of r and only one copy of o. You get the idea here. We just continually move and assign numbers to alphabets in a decreasing order as we move from left to right. At the end of the process, we see that the sum equals 200,037, which is less than the 6-digit number coded by 11, since we need a 2 in both the 100,000th and 1,000th digit. Therefore, E couldn't be larger than 2, and so must then be 1. With that sorted out, we can now look at the units column, where 1 plus 1 plus O plus O plus 1 must end in the same digit as N. In mathematics, we write this as 3 plus 2O is congruent to n modulo 10, where modulo 10 just means that we are looking at the units digit. We can try out all possibilities for O. We know O couldn't be 0 since the number coded by 1 cannot start with a 0, and O couldn't be 1 since 1 is already represented by E. But the rest of the remaining numbers are all fair game. We could then complete the table to see what n is. We rule out the case O equals 4, since that will give n equals 1, which is already represented by E. We can also rule out O equals 7, since that will give n equals 7, which is already represented by O itself. And finally, we can also rule out O equals 9, since again, it will result in n equals 1, which E already represents. After this, we can look at the tens column. We see that 2 plus 2w plus n plus either a 0 or 1, depending on whether there's a carry over from a unit's digit column, must end in digit 1. So again, we can write the congruous equation denoted in red and blue. Note that the blue equation is a case where there's no carry over, but the red equation denotes a carry over of 1 from a unit's digit. With this, we can add another row beneath the table and try to figure out what w could be based on the previous cases of O and N. For example, when N equals 7, we have 2 plus 2W plus 7 is congruent to 1 modulo 10, upon which simplifying gives 2W is congruent to 2 modulo 10, which just means 2 multiplied with the digit W must have 2 in the unit's digit. There can only be two possibilities for this, either W is 1 or W is 6. Doing the same thing, we can fill up the entire table. Note that some entries are denoted ns, since there's no solution. For example, if n equals 3, we have to find out a digit w such that 2 times w has 5 as its unit digit. This is impossible, as 2 times w will be even, and will not end if in 5, which is an odd number. Therefore, we have only 4 potential possibilities for o, n, and w. After that, we could even eliminate the first case, where w equals 1, 
since one is already represented by E, leaving only three more cases to investigate. We can start with O equals 2, N equals 7, and W equals 6. And let's move on to the hundreds column, where we can write down 2R plus 2T plus 2 plus 2 is congruent to V modulo 10, with the 2 in blue color coming from the carryover from a tenth digit. If you look at the thousands column, we can further write 2H plus X is congruent to 1 modulo 10, where X stands for the carryover from the hundreds digit column. Our first task again is to investigate how big or how small x can be. To do this, we can try the greedy approach again. If we want to minimize the carryover, we let r and t be the smallest digits which are yet unused, in this case 3 and 0, and see that we get 10 when we sum up 2r plus 2t plus 2 plus 2, upon which we can conclude that there's a carryover of 1, so x equals 1. Furthermore, if we want to maximize the carryover, we let r equals 9 and t equals 8, which should result in a carryover of 3. One important thing to note though is that x could only be 1 or 3, but not 2. Otherwise, if x is 2, then the left-hand side of the congruence is even, but the right-hand side isn't, since it ends in a 1. With this said, let's suppose x is 1. Then this means 2r plus 2t plus 2 plus 2 must be less than 20, in order to prevent a carryover of 2. Simplifying the inequality gives r plus t less than 8. At the same time, if you look at the thousands digit column, we see that 2h plus x must be less than 2 times 9 plus 1. Since this is less than 20, we see that the carryover from the thousands to the ten thousands digit column is at most 1. Since we already know that there's a carryover of 1 from the ten thousands to hundred thousands digit, in order for e to be 1, we could obtain the inequality 2t plus 1 must be greater than 9, where the 1 came from the maximum carryover of 1 from thousands digit as we discussed earlier. Solving this inequality gives t must be greater than 4. In order for r plus t to be less than 8 and t to be greater than 4, there are only three possibilities. We can rule out t equals 6 r equals 0 and t equals 7 r equals 0 directly since the digits 6 and 7 are already represented by W and N respectively. What about t equals 5, r equals 0? If we are to use this, then we see that there's no suitable candidate for H, since the possible candidates H equals 5 or 0 are already taken by T and R. So X equals 1 doesn't work, and we cannot assume a carryover of 3 from the hundreds digit, hence X equals 3. By looking at 2H plus 3, which must have units of digit of 1, or congruent to 1 modulo 10, we can see that H must be 4 or 9. If H equals 9, then the hundreds digit 2R plus 2T plus 2 plus 2 can add up to at most 30, since this expression is maximized when we let R and T be 8 and 5 respectively. Since X is 3, we need this expression to sum up to 30 precisely, for the carryover of 3 to happen. So we must have either r equals 8, t equals 5, or yc was 5. Let's fill in the cryptogram. If r equals 8, t equals 5, then summing up everything, l must equals 2, which is a contradiction, since 2 is already represented by o. If r equals 5 and t equals 8, then l must be equals 8, which again is a contradiction, since 8 is already represented by t. So h cannot be 9, it must, it must then be 4. r and t can then be 8, 9, 5, 9, or 5, 8. You can check that each of these cases, following our logic earlier, will not work. So, all this hard work only allows us to rule out the first combination of 2, 7, 6 for O, N, and W. You can follow exactly the same ideas above to see that 395 for O, N, and W wouldn't work as well. We will not show this as this is the same process as before and doesn't add anything new, not to mention the video would also be too long. You can do this as an exercise, however, if you are interested. So O, N, W equals 3, 9, and 0 is the correct one to pick. And from here, we'll go on and deduce the other numbers in the cryptogram. 
Again, we follow the similar sort of reasoning from before. Firstly, x, which stands for the carryover from hundreds to thousands digit column, could either be 1 or 3. If we assume x is 1, then the hundreds column, 2r plus 2t plus 3 plus 1, must be less than 20 to prevent a carryover of 2. And this simplifies to r plus t must be less than 8. And in a completely analogous manner as before, we must have 2t plus 1 greater than 9 for a carryover to the hundred thousands digit, implying t must be larger than 4. r plus t lesser than 8 and t larger than 4 only allows one possibility, which is t equals 5, r equals 2. But then, looking at the thousands digit column, we see that there's no suitable candidate for h, which could only be 0 or 5. But both of these numbers are represented already by w and t. So x equals 3, and since 2h plus 3 must end in 1, we see that either h equals 4 or 9. Since 9 is already represented by n, we must have h equals 4. As before, t must be greater than 4, so we can manually test a few cases here. If t is 5, then l is 1, which is a contradiction since 1 is already represented by e. If t is 6, then again, we have a contradiction since 3 is already represented by o. So t must be either 7 or 8. If t is 7, then l is 5, being unit digits of 2 times 7 plus 1 x being 3 means 2r plus 2t plus 3 plus 1 must be greater than or equal 30 for a carryover of 3 from a hundreds digit column to happen. By simplifying this inequality, we see that r must be greater or equal to 6. If r equals 6, then filling the cryptogram, we get a contradiction as v would then be 0, which is already represented by w. If r is 8, then v is 4, but 4 is already represented by h, creating another contradiction here. So t couldn't be 7, and so it must be 8. l is then 7, and similar logic from before allows us to deduce that r must be 5 or greater, which means r is 5 or 6. If r is 5, v would be 0, contradicting the fact that 0 is already represented by w. Finally, r equals 6 solves the entire puzzle. The process of solving this puzzle is slightly drawn out, but it remains quite instructive, working through all possible cases and showing you how to systematically eliminate possibilities before arriving at the final solution. Anyway, if you have watched until here, I guess you have enjoyed the experience. It would be very helpful if you could subscribe and like the video. I will see all of you in the next video, and until then, goodbye.